Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed products. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black green graveyard deck titled Spider Supply, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the deck is built around spider spawning from the latest anthology expansion, a 5 mana sorcery creating a 1 2 green spider creature token with reach for each creature card in our graveyard, and it also has a flashback for 6 in a black so we can cast it out of the graveyard and then exile it afterwards. So, spider spawning rewards us for filling the graveyard as not only are we putting additional creatures in the graveyard to power it up, but we're also potentially enabling the flashback half if we don't draw a spider spawning naturally. So the entire deck is dedicated to ramping and filling the graveyard, which is why at 1 mana, Stitcher Supplier is one of the most important cards in the deck. It's a 1-1 zombie that when it enters a battlefield or dies, we get to mill 3 cards, and we've got a ton of sacrifice outlets in the deck as well to sacrifice Stitcher Supplier and find additional copies, and one of those cards is Fiend Artisan, a 2 mana 1-1 one -one that gets plus one plus one for each creature card in our graveyard, so that's another card that incentivizes us to fill the graveyard, and for X and a black-green hybrid and tapping the Fiend Artisan and sacrificing another creature, we get to search our library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield, so we can potentially sacrifice a Stitcher Supplier and then search up another copy to keep sacrificing more suppliers and keep filling the graveyard to make our Fiend Artisan larger and hopefully eventually mill a spider spawning that we get to flashback, and of course there's a ton of additional utility, since our deck does have a whole bunch of silver bullets we can search up with our Fiend Artisan, as well as Fauna Shaman, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two that can pay a green mana, tap and discard a creature card to search our library for a creature card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So between Fiend Artisan and Fauna Shaman we can search up any card we need. And then another very important card in the deck is Cavalier of Thorns, the 5 mana 5-6 five elemental knight with reach, that when it enters the battlefield we get to reveal the top 5 cards of our library, put a land card from among them onto the battlefield, and the rest goes into our graveyard. So not only does the Cavalier help us ramp, but it also fills the graveyard to enable our various synergies. And when the Cavalier of Thorns dies, we may exile it, and if we do, put another target card from our graveyard on top of our library, which is also very synergistic with our Fiend Artisan. Let's say we need to find a Silver Bullet, but we already happened to mill it with our various mill effects, then now we get to sacrifice our Cavalier of Thorns to the Fiend Artisan, with X being whatever cost we need for the creature we need to search up, and then if the Cavalier dies, we get to put the card in the graveyard back into our library, and then we get to search it up with Fiend Artisan in one fell swoop, so we get to search whatever we need even if it's already in the graveyard. So that's the basic gist of the deck, and then another very nice finisher we have access to after we make a whole bunch of spider tokens is Crater Hoof Behemoth, the 8 mana 5-5 five five beast with haste, and when Crater Hoof enters a battlefield, creatures we control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures we control, so that can deal a massive amount of damage if we cast a big spider spawning the turn before. So that's our basic game plan, now let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana besides a full set of Stitcher Supplier, we also have some mana elves, with the full set of Jasper Sentinel, can tap alongside another untapped creature to add one mana of any color, and then of course a Lenor Elves, a staple in any green ramp deck. Then at 2 mana, besides Fiend Artisan and the full set of Fauna Shaman, we also have a singleton copy of Bray Maggot as one of our silver bullets that we can search up to take away a non-land card from the opponent's hand until Bray Maggot leaves the battlefield. Then at 3 mana we've got a whole host of silver bullet cards, including Vengeful Rebel, a 3-2 with Revolt, saying that when the Vengeful Rebel enters the battlefield, if a permanent we controlled left the battlefield this turn, target creature an opponent controls gets minus 3 minus 3 until end of turn. So this is very synergistic with with our Fiend Artisan, since we can potentially sacrifice a Stitcher Supplier, search up our Vengeful Rebel, and since Revolt has already been enabled, we get to take out an opposing creature in the process. Then we also have a singleton copy of a Ghost Rider, as an additional sacrifice outlet that we can also escape out of the graveyard for 3 and double black, and then we can exile 4 other cards to escape it, so we typically want to exile our lands to keep our creatures in a graveyard for spider spawning, and then enters as a 5-4 joined by a goat token, and then we can sacrifice another creature at any point to scry one, so that can help us dig towards the missing combo pieces. Great if we have a bunch of spider tokens we want to sacrifice to set up an even bigger spider spawning, and also gives us a way to potentially sacrifice Cavalier of Thorns if we need to get a card back out of our graveyard. 
Then we also have a one-off copy of Ramanap Excavator, a 2-3 that lets us play lands from our graveyard. So this is very useful to keep hitting our land drops. We also have some utility lands with Fraxian Tower and Castle Garenbrig that we wouldn't mind getting access to, so the Excavator can help us with that as well. And then we have a one-off copy of a Reclamation Sage, which destroys an artifact or enchantment when it enters a battlefield, so that gives us access to a bit of enchantment and artifact removal too. Then we've got a one-off copy of a World Shaper as another Silver Bullet, a 3-3 that when it attacks we mill the top three cards, and when World Shaper dies, return all land cards from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So if we can find a way to sacrifice the World Shaper, we can potentially get a ton of extra mana going. And World Shaper is also a very interesting combo with God Eternal Bontu, which is another one-off in the deck, a 5-6 a legendary creature zombie god with menace, and when Bontu enters the battlefield, sacrifice any number of other permanents, and then draw that many cards. So if we have a World Shaper in play, and then play Bontu, to, we can sacrifice World Shaper alongside any number of lands we control, and then since World Shaper dies, it will bring all those lands back to the battlefield right away, and we get to draw a ton of cards in the process. And God Eternal Bond to also quite synergistic with Spider Spawning, since we can potentially sacrifice a whole bunch of Spider Tokens just to draw extra cards and set up an even bigger Spider Spawning afterwards. And then when God Eternal Bond to dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, we may put it into its owner's library third from the top, so it has that recursive ability from the War of the Spark Gods. Then we've got a one-off copy of a Ravenous Chupacabra as another Silver Bullet. When it enters the battlefield, it destroys target creature and opponent controls, so a slightly more expensive but more powerful version of a Vengeful Rebel. And then we've got our one-off copy of a Crater Hoof Behemoth, which is the excellent finisher we can combine with our Spider Spawning. And then of course, four copies of Cavalier, four copies of Spider Spawning. Then going over the mana base, we've got 23 lands, including two copies of Phyrexian Tower, which is also great with our Stitcher Supplier, since we can sacrifice it to add double black to our mana pool, so both helps us ramp and helps us put creatures in a graveyard. We also have two copies of Castle Garenbrig, which despite not having any six mana creatures in the deck is still quite useful, since we can potentially cast a Cavalier of Thorns and activate a Fauna Shaman in the same turn, or we can potentially use that mana for Fiend Artisan's ability, so there's a lot of activated abilities that synergize with the castle, and it also helps us ramp into Crater Hoof a turn sooner. And then we've got a whole host of dual lands, including four copies of Overgrown Tomb, four of the Black Green Pathway, four copies of Blooming Marsh, and then six basic forests and one basic swamp. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice looking hand, double stitcher supplier plus fiend artisan to sacrifice them and maybe help find some ramp to get to Cavalier of Thorns. And then we naturally end up milling a spider spawning that we get to flashback. So turn two we'll play Artisan and take it from there. Alright, opponents with a turn one Legion's Landing. Fauna Shaman's also interesting. I think I'll still go with the Artisan here. Could attack for one since they'll probably take it. But I'm pretty happy if they were to attack here. Right, so it's a life gain deck, more Stitcher Suppliers. I do want to get additional mana going, so I could sack Supplier to get a Lenor Elves, for instance, which I don't mind, and I'll have to main phase that. Alternatively, I can just play Fauna Shaman and then next turn activate it to find an Elves. So interesting spot. I don't want to let my opponents easily transform the Legion's Landing, so I'll just play the Shaman here. And hang back. It's gonna be a Maul of the Skyclaves, alright. Could eventually find Reclamation Sage to destroy it. Although the Reach creatures from Spider Spawning will do a good job too. Yeah, I think we gotta go digging for an elf here. And give us access to more mana. Skyclave Apparition. Goes after Lenor Elves, opponent with a land destruction plan here. A 
landing transforms. So first strike will happen, they go to 26, but we'll still get to ET Ascendant, and then I'll trim the 1-1 one, one here. Put in Dullscat to make an Angel, and there's a land. Alright, so I can play Stitcher Supplier, get another Lenor Elves. And then the first spider spawning can stem the bleeding while we set up Cavalier to get back Crater Hoof Behemoth. Okay, taking the trade here. So we get to cast spawning. Make a non zero amount of tokens. And I could attack for 14. Pwn probably chumps with the vampire token here, so we'll just pass. And this buys us enough time to play Cavalier of Thorns, sacrifice Cavalier of Thorns to eventually get Crater Hoof out of the graveyard. That's the ultimate goal. So I'm not too concerned about the angels for now. Opponent's going to move them all to one of the angels. And then we could technically take out a 6-6 six -six here. Question is, is that worth it or do we just chum block? I'm definitely interested in killing the 4-4s four and then I think we'll just chum the 6-6 six -six first strike. Since they only get to take out two spiders, they don't gain any life at instant speed, so the Pride Mate's still gonna be a 4 4. Yeah, it looks good. Another Cavalier's excellence. Cavalier also finds lands untapped, so we can potentially still play something afterwards. I'm gonna go with the Castle Garen Break, even though I could go Overgrown Tomb and still play Supplier. Since that Castle Garen Break is gonna come in handy when we need to activate Fiend Artisan for X equals 8 to get back Crater Hoof. Linden's gonna gain more life. What we don't wanna see is the 4-mana Jani Planeswalker that can potentially exile our entire board if the opponent's at 35 or more life. Since that's gonna get rid of all our spiders, opponent declines to attack. So that buys us more time. Let's see, how much mana do I have? 5, 6, 7, 8 with a castle. So one short of getting Crater Hoof back. So for now we'll just play Cavalier. Hit a land. And then... Don't have a ton of creatures left to search up at this point. Although I think... Yeah, there should be one more Stitcher Supplier, so... I can activate this for X equals 1. Get a Stitcher Supplier before we play the other one. Or nope, never mind, I guess we're out of Stitcher Suppliers. So... Sentinel's fine then. Alright, we'll pass, and then next turn we get back Crater Hoof, and that should be quite powerful, or we can Spider Spawning first to set up even more damage at the risk of our opponent top decking a Jani. Yeah, I guess we can do that. Let's have some fun. 
It's a lot of spiders. Alright, opponents got one turn to top deck. Because next turn they're gonna be in trouble. Sarah Ascendant, 6-6 six, six, Flying Lifelink. That's okay. Alright, it's go time. So X equals 8. Cavalier puts back Crater Hoof. Then we search up Crater Hoof. And that should be plenty. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn one elf off Overgrown Tomb. Although in this case, Forest probably would have been fine too. Probably gonna end up shocking myself anyway. And then next turn we get to go Supplier plus Artisan. And then eventually sacrifice supplier with artisan. Yeah, um, I guess we can go sentinel plus fiend artisan. And then next turn play supplier. Tap it for mana with sentinel before sacrificing it to the fiend artisan. Put it on a red green dino deck. And a turn to huntmaster. Alrighty, so... Can even activate Castle Garenbrig here, potentially. Let's see. Yeah, I guess that would require tapping the Fiend Artisan, so I guess it doesn't quite work out. So I could tap this for, let's say, black. And then... Yeah, cannot quite activate Castle, otherwise I could search up a Cavalier of Thorns, but we'll just search up another Stitcher Supplier. Or I could get a Vengeful Rebel to kill the Huntmaster. That's also reasonable, actually. So X equals 3. And then... Sacrifice this. And then... Get our Vengeful Rebel. And then next turn I should be able to activate Castle Garenbrick to search up Cavalier of Thorns. Or we can draw one, that also works. So let's see, decisions, decisions. This can make mana. Can activate castle and then I guess we'll just play cavalier play elves or I can sacrifice rebel to get a cavalier of thorns and keep this one for later seems fine too chupacabra got milled so we can't search that up anymore and then if we find an untapped green source we can still potentially play the elves This could also be a game where we just hard cast Crater Hoof without Spider spawning first. Since we have a lot of power toughness in play already. That's gonna be a Ripjaw Raptor, which draws a card thanks to the two damage here. Opponent could potentially play Galta this turn. Ooh, a Rampaging Procedon. That's pretty good against Spider spawning. So. Opponent hits for 6, so next turn how much mana can I make? So this is essentially 6, 7, 8, so yeah we can Crater Hoof with 6 creatures in play. I think that's going to be lethal, so we'll just take it here. And see what else they got. Maybe a fight spell. Opponent passes, there's a spider spawning, but don't really want to take 9 damage off Ferocidon here, since I think this is already lethal. 
Although, let's see, I guess I have to tap Cavalier of Thorns. In which case, is it still lethal? We'll have six creatures, so they both get plus six plus six. So we'll have a 16 Trampler and an 11 Trampler, so 27 Trample, opponent's got eight toughness. So yeah, barring any interaction, they should still be dead. All right, GG's. If they didn't just play Ferocidon, I definitely would have cast the spider spawning first, but there you go. On to the next one. On the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn one elves, turn two sentinel, plus maybe fauna shaman. Take it from there. And then Shaman can find a Fiend Artisan, perhaps. Alright, Phyrexian Tower also great with our Stitcher Supplier. Opponent foretells what is most likely a Doomscar. So next turn I could already lose my board. In which case I don't really want to play Fauna Shaman here. So I could just play a Stitcher Supplier and pass a turn. Ah, there's a spider spawning. Yeah, I guess I could give them a Jaspera Sentinel too. It's kind of hard to say. I think I'm just going to hit for one. Another card foretold, more mana creatures that don't especially line up great. Well, could play an excavator for value. And get it swept up, and then next turn play Fauna Shaman. Don't have a lot of pressure going on, and I don't want to give them infinite time. But, um, yeah, I think I just hit for two. Alright, there's a Doomscar, that happens. And then now we'll play Excavator. And then we can play Castle Garenbrig into another Sentinel. And I imagine they'll wipe the board again if they have a second Doomscar. Alright, Cavalier's great. So we'll play a land under the graveyards. Play Cavalier, still have a green mana floating from Castle Garenbrig. Might get countered, does not. It's gonna be a Chemister's Insights. And we'll grab an Overgrown Tomb, I suppose. And then I could play something else, but it's pretty likely that my opponent wipes the board again. And we've got enough pressure in play as is, so I think we're fine just hitting for three. Right, it's gonna be a prison realm. Good answer for Cavalier. There's another one. So could already go for a small spider spawning to force another board wipe. Or we can play another cavalier. Play it untapped. So there's not a ton of lands in the graveyard for me to exile if I want to escape Woe Strider. 
So I might not want to here, even though I have the capability. So we'll just hit for three again. And pass. Ah, there's a Wrath. That happens. And do I want to get anything back with Cavalier of Thorns? I guess I could loop another Cavalier back. And just wait until we can play an even bigger spider spawning that's lethal by itself. So, might as well use Castle. So, now do I have enough lands in the graveyard to exile? I guess I'll have to exile one creature to get a Ghost Rider in play, which is probably still worth it. Spider spawning has a few creatures in the graveyard, can use a Fiend Artisan to keep track here. And I'll play a Sentinel. It's gonna be another Doom Scar, so that's the other foretold card. And I'll put another Cavalier back on top. Could have scryed a bunch first with my Wastrider to manipulate the rest of my library, but we're gonna mill those anyway with Cavalier. So, use Castle again. And then four, five, six, seven, I could flash back a spider spawning two here. Alright, so they need another Sweeper. And then, if they kill Cavalier, I can put Spider Spawning on top so we can cast it and then flash it back. Opponent's gonna draw two. Discards the Sphinx's Revelation, which they don't have time casting. And they concede since they couldn't find another Sweeper. So yeah, the Graveyard deck was a little slow to get going, but once we started chaining together Cavalier of Thorns, it was very difficult for the opponent to find a foothold in the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with... Not the best hand ever, but I think we can still try it. And then rely on Fiend Artisan to find... Stitcher Supplier to fill the graveyard for spider spawning. But we could use some cheap sacrifice fodder. That's not exactly cheap. Opponent on Grixis. And a turn to Cathartic Reunion, discarding Scholar of the Lost Trove, so it's uh, an opposing graveyard deck. Yeah, I guess we'll run out Vengeful Rebel here. And then next turn I can maybe sacrifice it. Don't really have any graveyard hate for the Silver Bullets, although we might search up a copy of Brain Maggot to maybe take away a reanimation card. Alright, second Frexian Tower, a little awkward since it is legendary. So, I think we just sacrifice Rebel to get Stitcher Supplier here. 
Could attack first, but the opponent's probably happy to mill more cards. Opponent passes. Swamp is good. So we'll just sack Supplier and get another one, I think. And then we can slowly work our way up towards Cavalier of Thorns. Five mana, could see Umburial Rites. Target Scholar, which can cast a Cathartic Reunion here. Discarding more creatures to reanimate with a flashback to Umburial Rites. Ooh, Eerie Ultimatum and Platinum Angel. Now we do have answers to Platinum Angel with Ravenous Chupacabra, Reclamation Sage also works. So that's not necessarily game over. Fauna Shaman. So... Currently have... Four lands, can make it five just to get one extra mana from Phyrexian Tower, which is not quite enough to activate Artisan to get a Cavalier of Thorns. So I think we just get another Supplier here, and then play Fauna Shaman. Could have also gone for Lenor Elves, just to make sure I have the mana necessary to get a Cavalier. But this way we're also powering up our spider spawning in hand. So can already make a decent number of spiders. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have something like a massacre worm, which would be quite painful if we make a whole bunch of spiders. It's gonna be a charter course. Discards a ruinous ultimatum, which they can try to cast with is Color of the Lost Trove and puts Platinum Angel in play. We'll take six. So I can Reclamation Sage the Angel. Ooh, Castle Garenbrig, an excellent pickup as well. Don't have the green mana necessary to activate it yet, but this turn will Rex Sage the Platinum Angel. And I could just hit my opponent for quite a bit here. Yeah, I guess that's maybe worth it. Could also sacrifice Supplier to Phyrexian Tower in the hopes of just killing them. Although, let's see, even if we mill three creatures, 14 plus 3 is uh, 17. Wouldn't quite be lethal, so we'll probably just hit like this. Opponent is at 4. Shard, of course. Discards an Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Doesn't get the cast trigger when they reanimate it, at least. Secret Keeper mills for four. Finds another Umburial Rites, which could reanimate the Angel once again. Although what they really want to set up is reanimating Scholars so they can cast their ultimatum. So there's Angel. So do we still have Chupacabra available? We do. So I could just get a Chupacabra to kill Platinum Angel again. And then... Don't quite have the mana to Crater Hoof alongside Chupacabra this turn. Could just set up a big spider spawning. 
and then maybe just search up Chupacabra with Fauna Shaman. So I think I'll start by activating Shaman, discarding Behemoth, getting Chupacabra, Bray Maggot also an option, but Chupacabra seems better. And then we can sacrifice Stitcher Supplier. And cast a spider spawning. And pass turn. Don't want to attack into their supplier. And then next turn we can kill Angel on attack. So they need to maybe hard cast Scholar to flashback ultimatum. Right, Mills again with the Secret Keeper. Uh oh, Turf of the Peaks could be scary in combination with Runus Ultimatum and a Tempowered Ulamog. And yeah, there's Scholar of the Lost Trove. So that's gonna. Ooh, goes for Runus Ultimatum. Pretty sure we would have been dead to the uh, Author Ultimatum here. But I guess I wouldn't complain. So just play another Spider Spawning. Which should keep us alive. And then next turn, kill Platinum Angel on attack. Let's see, would we have died to Terror of the Peaks? Ulamog is 10 damage, Ox is 14 damage. There's a Zakama in the graveyard too now. And they can reanimate another Scholar now that they milled it with Unburial Rites, which will get back the other ultimatum and now we'll definitely be dead. Alright, otherwise we would have had it. So it ended up being closer than it looked. This is the type of matchup we're having access to a Silver Bullet to deal with the opponent's graveyard would significantly improve our chances. Something like a Loaming Shaman or a Scavenging Ooze. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Sentinel into turn 2 Artisan plus Supplier. Facing Sky Marcher Aspirin, so white we need deck. Then Ventral Rebel. Could maybe be combined in a later turn if we sacrifice a creature to the artisan. And on to Vanguard, okay. And then Supplier. I could also throw in front of the Adanto Vanguard potentially. Could have also done it the other way around in case we happen to mill multiple creatures and had a bigger Fiend Artisan by playing the Supplier and then Artisan. Alright. Yeah, I guess I could jump here. And then next turn I still have the mana to Sentinel and then sacrifice Sentinel to get another Stitcher Supplier. Alternatively, let's see. Yeah, if I take it, next turn I could... Sacrifice Supplier using Sentinel's mana. But I'm still going to be short of actually playing the Rebel if I also want to get a 1-drop. So I think this is okay. Rebel can be a pretty nice answer to Vanguard, which is otherwise very difficult to kill. Another Supplier to draw. It's not a bad start. Could keep my Artisan on defense. 
Or I could sacrifice to get another supplier and just set up for an extra turn. Since we have a spider spawning in hand. And then definitely want to tap this for mana firsts. And then play another Sentinel. And next turn I could already spider spawning to stabilize the board. So while not quite a Lenor Elves, Sentinel is still useful to provide us a little bit of extra mana early on. And yeah, we can use the Fiend Artisan to keep track of how many creatures we have in Graveyard, so we can make 10 Spider Tokens next turn. Opponent's got two cards in hand, maybe Convoking a Loxodon here. Nope, Tribunal to go after Fiend Artisan, presumably. So I'll need a land to Spider Spawning now. I could jump with Supplier, guess we'll keep it around. Yeah, without Artisan we don't quite have our engine online the same way we would like. So I can just play Rebel as a blocker. And Lenor Elves. And then hope to survive another turn. But then spider spawning may or may not be enough to actually take over. We'll need to find something else to go alongside it. And a venerated Loxodon now. So I need to keep one extra creature alive so I can cast Spider Spawning using Sentinel. So I guess that means I have to double jump. Take three and then next turn we'll have five mana. Cavalier also an excellent draw, but I got a spider spawning first. Fourteen spiders. Unbreakable formation, not a bad play. So I guess we're just jumping one each. This can help us flashback the spider spawning too. No attacks. Alright, so we're trying to hold our ground. Alright, we're able to hold off some creatures at least. And then... I suppose we can... Block with three additional tokens and then just jump the vanguard. That seems fine. And they only get to kill three creatures here. Another spider spawning, although we can maybe flash one back first to be more mana efficient.
And there's gonna be an almost limitless supply of spiders now. And then eventually we'll find a fiend artisan or fauna shaman to find a crater hoof to completely take over. Ooh, wow. The protector shield actually incredibly relevant. Means our spiders don't deal any damage now. But uh, yeah, again, our crater hoof plans got that covered. So another spider spawning. And then I could keep elf in hand in case I draw a fauna shaman. Might as well. Although, let's see. Do we still have crater hoof in the deck? We do. Do I need to play the elf in order to cast crater hoof? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't. So we'll hold it. So my spiders don't deal any damage because of the shield. So they could start getting more aggressive here. Do have a Reclamation Sage in the graveyard, so if my Cavalier dies, I guess we can destroy the shield. But for now, we'll just make lots of spiders, and Phyrexian Tower is a way to sacrifice my Cavalier, so... Flash this back once again, and then I can play Phyrexian Tower, and end of turn, sacrifice my Cavalier, put Reclamation Sage on top, Destroy the shield, attack with everyone, and that should do it. Sacrifice Cavalier. Put Sage back on top. Not as satisfying as a Crater Hoof Behemoth would be here, but still good enough. I don't think I'm going to play around Settler Wreckage. So we'll just turn the team sideways. GG's. All right, and there we go. The spider's getting it done just in the nick of time. So yeah, overall this black-green spider spawning deck's quite fun. You do need some early acceleration to get your engines online, otherwise you're going to be a little bit too slow against a lot of the faster decks in the format. And then it's also very customizable since you can easily swap out some of the silver bullets depending on the matchups you expect to face. Maybe add a Massacre Girl or Massacre Worm if you expect to go up against a lot of Go White decks like Elves. You can maybe add some Graveyard Hate for Graveyard decks. So there's a lot of customization available. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.